great CFFC card uh, Saturday at the Borgata. Three title fights on the line. They're doing a great job. Um, and, of course, uh, Burt Watson, everyone knows him as the, uh, quote, former babysitter to the stars now, of course, uh, with CFFC for about a year, then with the uh, big news, the formation of Alliance, which went public over this past October, handles the uh, fighter relations, does a great job. We also like to uh, dive into our little Facebook Live as well, which hopefully we'll get that back up and running soon, but he's kind enough to join us. What's going on, Bert? Man, I'm trying to make it, baby. How about yourself, big guy? <laughs> I'm doing well. Always good to touch base. And uh, this card is stacked on Saturday. You got three title fights. Uh, it seems as though there's been a lot of trash talking, too, online. But I'll tell you, the, the first thing that stands out with me is the uh, heavyweight fight. Because anytime you have a hard thrower, a, a guy with ridiculous power uh, like Zuan Yanwu, to me, if you blink, you can miss something in that one. <laughs> Well, you know what? You can't blink on heavyweights, period. Yeah. You know, across the board. The minute you the minute you blink on a heavyweight, they're gonna make you think that you should have been watching. <laughs> you know, and, and, and you got you got Zoo. Yep. I mean, this is if if correct me if I'm wrong, I think this is this is Zoo's third uh title defense. Yeah, because he's won uh, the belt so, several uh, times, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, yep. yeah. This is his third title defense and, and I mean I've seen the transformation of that kid uh, it, it's been un unbelievable. I mean, you know, his strength, his conditioning, you know, his his motivation, his commitment, you know, his. I mean, I, I, I've I've seen the progression of all that, and you know, and and while he was, you know, kind of dedicated himself to all of those things, you know, in the background with Sean T yep. doing the same thing relentlessly, just kind of taking it one at a time and. You know, getting the three and zero. Oh, you know, so it, it's it's going to be an unbelievable card. Uh, uh, unbelievable guys, and, and I've you know I've, I had a chance to visit the gyms for both of these guys during the course of their training, and man, I mean, I've seen nothing but commitment, and you know, you know, I mean, trash talking is a part of what we do, baby. You know, it is what, <laughs> whatever it takes legally. <laughs> Get into that cage. I'm all for it. Baby. I hear you. I, I don't care what it is, as long as it's legal. Yeah. You know, it's funny because when you when you talk about uh, Zoon, you go back to some of his fights against Bell, against uh, Plinio Cruz. Like I said, if you blink, uh, he's just such a patient fighter, and I think Teed's going to have his work cut out for him. But that can be an explosive fight. Uh, as I mentioned, it's going to be three fights as well. The other fight that's kind of interesting is uh, Bill Agilio uh, taking on um, Jared Gordon, uh, featherweight title, uh, Senor Perfecto in Bill. And, you know, here's a guy that uh, 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 braggadocious, cocky, confident, <laughs> but well-rounded fighter. Fighter, well-rounded striker, good solid ground game as well. So, you know, again, to me, it's like throw a dart with that fight. It, it, to me, that's enough for grabs fight. Well, you know, and, and Jared Gordon is not lacking in confidence either, baby. You know, so both of these guys, you know, in terms of their conf their confidence level, you know, and 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 their commitment and their training, and you know, you can you can throw it you can throw a dart, you know, yeah. but I, I, I've I've seen. I've seen coming on both ends striking, and I've seen their ability to going down. And I think we last saw Jared Gordon, you know, win his fight. I mean, with a, a, a leg kick, you know that that that, you know. So I mean, and 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 Bill, you know, Bill Bill brings it to you, you know. So it, it's one of those things where, you know, uh, the the confidence level is real high on both sides. On both sides of the fence, and uh, when you got that kind of situation, you know, and guess what, they both want to wear that belt. Yes, but only one person can wear it, baby. Yeah, and we'll we'll get guess we'll what? get in and we'll get into why a lot of these fighters uh, <laughs> want to have a good showing. Uh, also, the bantamweight title on the line, uh, Nick Pace, Amit Kairatelli. Uh, again, you got you know, it's great matchmaking by CFFC, but to me, one of the fights I'm actually interested in is, is Sterling and Richmond, because we, we already know what his big brother, uh, Aljamain Sterling, has done with the CFFC and now UFC, but Richmond's a guy that wants to kind of come in and spoil the party, and what's interesting is when you look at the younger Sterling, you know, this is his pro debut, so that's uh -huh, a good setup yeah. for him to really uh, make some noise, good good opportunity. Uh, 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 you, got, you, got, you, got, you got pedigree against a guy that says, I ain't giving up my degree. Okay, so you got you got you got that thing you, with 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 Sterling, you know, with with his brother and 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 coming from such a strong uh, camp 
up there with with Ray Longo and Matt Serra and yeah. and and you know training with Weidman and and Ally Quinta, you know, and 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 those guys. It's it's a good solid foundation. And then on the other hand, you got Kenny Kenny Richmond, who's probably now comfortable in in this weight class, comfortable where he is and. You know, I've 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 seen him bouncing around with Sean Brady and Jonathan and 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 Paul Felder and down there with Daniel Gracie in that gym. You know, uh, so he's he's got real good, consistent, good, strong, you know, ground game and and stand up. So for these two young guys, you know, to be put together at this point, you know, it's it's an unbelievable fight, man, and I'm. I'm I'm looking I'm looking forward to it, you know. Yeah, and we mentioned again Troy Sterling, uh, uh, his older brother, top ten UFC bantamweight, and Aljamain Sterling. You mentioned Richmond as well. Uh, you know, again another fighter that can either only short time uh, pro career as well two and zero, but can end it yeah. with can end it with a kick, can end it with a punch, can get you to the ground submission or grinding out as well. We've seen that with his. Uh, Ami background as well, and again a couple minutes with um, Bert Watson, the writer of uh, director of fighter relations, uh, and and again you know it's interesting you had such a long stint with the UFC, then now mm-hmm. with the CFFC, and all of a sudden because everything was made public, going back to October and what they're doing under that Alliance MMA umbrella. I mean, as a whole, what Alliance MMA has has really kind of cornered the market, especially on the East Coast, but now expanding all over the country. I mean, just talk about. Uh, that for a moment, and and what the folks at Alliance MMA are doing, because you know you, you turn around and they get another uh, MMA promotional company right under their belt. Right, right. Well, you know it, it, it's unbelievable what Alliance MMA is doing uh, for the regional promoter on, on, on a regional level. You know, it's 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 hard for regional promotions to get major sponsorships, major major television deals. You know, when 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 they have to also go out and get content and have content mm-hmm. and have distributions and all those things, you know, so they need that kind of a support system that is going to allow them all those things that can get them to the next level or get them those big sponsorship deals. And Alliance MMA gives them that comfort level, gives them that backbone. Uh, and Alliance has been very, very aggressive in acquiring, you know, I mean, and they're all over the map. I mean, you know, they got HFC and, yep. you know, Hoosier yep. in Indiana, and they got they got V3 uh, in Tennessee, and they just acquired Howard Davis Fight Promotions yep. in Florida, yep. and, you know, uh, Shogun in Baltimore, and, and Combat Sport up in Seattle. So they go across the board. And this month alone, man, I mean, uh, I, I, I think within the next two or three weekends, they've got six shows going on across the country. And and, and they're going to back that up again in March, you know, uh, uh, with Combat Sports on the 18th in Seattle and V3 in Memphis. And then CFFC 64 is going to make its debut debut. Uh, in uh, San Diego, mm-hmm. out west, yep. with Eric Del Fiero on, on March 26. You know, so you know they they that and and just bringing on Jim Burns as uh, as, the, as the the new CM CMO for their for their marketing and 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 you know the, being the, the 62 and 63 being televised on CBS Sports Network. I mean that's that's all of that stuff has legs, baby. And it just says that uh, it's a testament to the the aggressive aggressiveness and commitment of Alliance MMA and the sport in MMA in general, man. It's 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 nothing short but to be excited about. You know, it's going to make the lights brighter for a lot of these regional guys <laughs> and regional promotions. You know, and you know, and I, I, I say sometimes when the lights go on, some people's lights go out. That you're right. Sometimes you're right. You're right. Give, these lights are going to get bright. And, and let me ask you this, and that's a nice little teaser and a segue. Why do you think there's going to be a little more pressure on some of these fighters come Saturday night uh, at the Borgata um, uh, for CFFC 63? Because I know they're going to have someone watching closely over them that might have a life-changing uh, opportunity afterwards. Uh, well, talk a little bit about that. You know, first of all, you know, they're fighting under the CFFC banner. That's number one. 
and then and then couple that with the alliance, you know, with, with with the alliance banner, you know, fighting fighting on that level alone, you know, I, I mean, it doesn't get any, any any bigger than that. The biggest achievement is getting there. Now you got to stay there, and you put all that together with the fact that you know, my understanding that Dana White is coming in this weekend and bringing his his show, looking for a fight, uh, bringing that show to to the Borgata in Atlantic City. And, and so, you know, these guys are going to be on full blast this weekend, baby. You know, I mean, full blast, and the lights are going to get real bright. But you know what? That's what, they, that's what they fight for. Right. That's what they work for. That's what they work so hard. They work hard for somebody like CFFC and Alliance to give them the opportunity to showcase their talents across the country. And for somebody like Dana White to come into – you know, uh, bringing the premier, the, the the premier promotional company in MMA in front of these guys and saying, "Hey, you know, there's a possibility I might snatch one of you guys yeah. out of here." Yeah. You know, so all of those things are 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 about to happen this weekend. But if it were not for CFFC and Alliance MMA, baby, none of that. Would be possible, but it's all together right now, and it is the alliance happening. All right, listen, before I let you get out of here, and again, uh, for more information, cffc.tv, www.cffc.tv. I know from 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 what I'm told, uh, you know, you can't even, it's it's a hot ticket down here, uh, and I look forward to it okay. on Saturday night as well. All right, let, let me get your thoughts on this real quick, because you had a little more than a cup of coffee with the UFC. You know I'm a boxing guy. You know I'm a MMA guy as well. <laughs> Um, listen, I, I, I don't, I'm not a fan of this whole McGregor and, and potential fight with Floyd Mayweather. I'm not. And I'm just right, being right. totally honest. I, I get mm. it. People want to see the MMA guy. They want to see the, the McGregors of the world go in and give Floyd Mayweather, Mayweather his first uh, career loss, if anything. I know it's a different animal. I think if people plop down a ton of money on this, I honestly think you're going to see Mayweather kind of dance around and McGregor if this fight goes uh, through, very frustrated. I don't think there's going to be a lot of action. You know, w Floyd never gets hit. Um, mm -hmm. Do you think, first of all, do you think this fight will happen? And second of all, can you see down the road now, we see a lot of MMA fighters who were boxers, it didn't pan out, and now they're MMA fighters. Can you see, uh, I, I don't want to say a cross, but down the road maybe some MMA fighters wanting to become boxers? Well, I, you know, uh, I, I didn't think or didn't really consider this fight too too seriously or too much until I, I actually heard Floyd Mayweather himself saying, I want to make it happen. You know, I heard him on I heard him on ESPN saying that he wanted to make this happen. You know, and I've heard uh Conor McGregor in in his you know, in his little yep. repertoire <laughs> to, to <laughs> describe what he could or what he wouldn't do and I and I've I've been privy to to to, to see or or been around you know with with Ray Mercer when when he came in of course. you know I I actually did the fight with Randy Couture against uh, uh, James Tony you know and and it, it's two different skills two different skills level but they're professional athletes and if somebody finds a real way to bring it in the middle and bring it down the middle. And put it in the in, in that square circle or that cage, you know. I can guarantee you, if these two guys decide to get together, people are going to watch it. I'm not. Listen, people, I'm not. I'm not are, arguing that. I I agree it. with you. I I I have a feeling. I, I think I know how this would this fight would would um uh would would pan out. That's just me. That's just my opinion. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. You know. You know, no, where, well, <laughs> I, you know I'm, I'm, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not a. I'm not a fan of 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 people, especially when it comes to a professional level, getting out of your lane. There, God has blessed us with only a few athletes that can do that, or that have been able to do that. You know, but when it comes to a professional athlete at this level, you know, I mean, I, I'm. I. It'd be interesting to see what would happen if it came down to just a. A primary boxing match, and these two guys putting, I mean, Floyd Mayweather in his element doesn't stand still and let anybody hit him. Exactly, exactly. You know, he doesn't do that normally. So he's, for him to change that 
and to let that happen, that's not going to happen. So he's going to he's going to be in his element. He's going to duck and dodge, and he's going to slip punches. And Conor McGregor is going to have to chase him down that's and right. cut it off and stop him and tag him. Yeah, you know he's not going to outbox him. He's going to have to stop him and tag him. And, and and get him in get him in a in, in, in an uncomfortable situation. Sure, which is up against the ropes, he, and Floyd never he, gets up against go. the ropes. Where, so. where where he never where he yep. never gets up. That's right. But you know, it would be it would be interested to see it happen, but I can tell you something. When you got one guy that averages a million point eight buys and you got another <laughs> guy that averages a million <laughs> buys, you know, it's not gonna it's not gonna get by anybody's, you know, board table or board level to say, Hey, this shouldn't happen. Yeah. One way or another, it would, but you know what? In the meantime, we got CFFC 63 coming this we do. weekend. We and do. Anybody that wants to see it can catch it live on stream at cffc.tv slash live, you know, to see it uh, to see it on stream. And then, again, at the same time, we got CFFC, CFFC 62 coming up on CBS mm-hmm. Sports yep. on February 23rd at midnight. And coming back, baby, on March the second at ten thirty, CFFC sixty three. I, I look oh, forward to it. I, I look forward to it. I'll be cage side, so we'll have a blast with that. Uh, hey, uh, appreciate it, my friend. You got an open invite. Hey, I, I'll see you on Saturday, hey, right? Hey, we had a, we had a great time last we did. week, and I, I hope to see us do that again, man. And thanks for the invite. <laughs> this is what we do, and why we do it, baby. All right, Bert. Be well. I appreciate it, pal. Thanks, Rich. All right, you got Always. it. All right, you got it. <laughs> Bert Watson, he's a great guy. He, he really is. He's. I'll tell you what. You talk. You want to have a great salesman in your corner. You got one.